While most quote unquote biohacks do nothing more than waste your time and empty your wallet, there are a handful of these human enhancement strategies that can accelerate your muscle gains. And that's exactly what I'm going to share with you in this video. Five biohacks that actually work and will significantly improve your ability to build muscle. But first, what exactly is biohacking? Biohacking is a fusion of science, technology, and lifestyle tweaks aimed at fine-tuning the body for optimum function and holistic wellness. When applied to muscle growth, biohacking encompasses a range of interventions geared toward optimizing nutrient utilization, hormone levels, and cellular processes involved in hypertrophy. Ultimately, the goal is to unlock new avenues for maximum maximizing our gains. So without further ado, let's dive into the five biohacks that can actually help you build muscle. Number one, red light exposure. Our cells are remarkably responsive to various forms of light, triggering a myriad of positive chain reactions within our body. Red light therapy, also known as photobiomodulation or low-level laser therapy, harnesses a specific wavelength of red light that penetrates the skin, stimulating cellular activity. Our skin serves as a conduit for light absorption, allowing our cells to react even when our eyes are closed. Mitochondria possesses a receptor that specifically detects red light. This interaction prompts a series of reactions within the mitochondria, resulting in increased ATP production, thereby optimizing cellular energy utilization and minimizing waste. Furthermore, red light therapy enhances nitric oxide activity, promoting improved blood flow throughout the body. The question then becomes, do these reactions from red light exposure have any effect on muscle growth? One 2015 study compared three groups, a control group that didn't train, a training only group, and a group that both trained and received red light exposure therapy. They found that the group who was exposed to red light experienced up to a 50% higher rate of hypertrophy compared to training alone. Another paper published in the Lasers in Medical Science Journal saw a 29% greater one rep max strength in the quads compared to the training only group over a 12 week period. And if that wasn't enough, this study on the biceps showed a 12% increase in peak force production compared to placebo. Studies also suggest that red light exposure can reduce fatigue before and after training. And to top it all off, research has shown that red light exposure produced almost double the amount of melatonin in elite athletes, significantly improving sleep quality. Number 2. Palm Cooling the premise behind palm cooling is that temperature is a primary limiting factor to performance. By targeting the palms due to the unique vascular structure, this strategy facilitates core temperature regulation and minimizes the impact of heat-induced fatigue on muscle performance. One 2012 study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research sought to determine the effects of palm cooling on training volume. Participants were divided into two groups those with lifting experience and those who were naive to training. For the experienced group, participants who used palm cooling saw a 144% increase in pull-up capacity compared to no increase in the control group. For the naive group, the cooled subjects showed an 80% increase in work volume, whereas the control group showed only a 20% increase. For the bench press, participants averaged a total of 62 reps for the palm cooling cooling group, while the non-cooling group averaged 53. After five weeks, the number of max bench press repetitions by the palm cooling group increased to 86, while the non-cooling group only topped out at 60 reps. That's a 24 rep increase for palm cooling compared to just 7 for passive rest. All of these results show that palm cooling is effective in increasing training volume by delaying the onset of fatigue. The question the question then becomes, can palm cooling also improve strength? Shockingly enough, accomplished lifters in the cooling group experienced a 22% increase in strength compared to zero increase during the control. And remember, it's palm cooling, not palm freezing. According to Caruso and colleagues, maintaining a cool 15 degrees Celsius should do the trick. 
Number three, blood flow restriction. Blood flow restriction training offers a novel approach to stimulating muscle growth, although it is specific to the muscles of the limbs. This type of training is about strategically occluding blood flow to your muscles using specialized cuffs or tourniquets. BFR is not about restricting blood flow in general, but rather it's about restricting the outflow of blood from the muscle. Reducing the flow of blood out of the muscle causes metabolites to accumulate more quickly, which in in turn allows the mechanisms of metabolite related fatigue to develop faster. This peripheral fatigue leads to an increase in effort needed to keep lifting the load and an involuntary reduction in muscle fiber shortening velocity. Thus, BFR allows for the highest number of muscle fibers possible to be recruited and therefore experience high levels of mechanical tension. According to this meta-analysis, BFR produces the same growth response as traditional strength training only with significantly lighter loads. By manipulating blood flow to the muscles, you can stimulate hypertrophic responses while minimizing stress on your joints and connective tissues. This makes BFR training particularly suitable for individuals recovering from injury or those seeking to augment their training regimen with low-impact alternatives. It also makes training more time efficient since you'll be reaching failure earlier and not need 20, 30, or 40 reps to get there. Number four, heat therapy. Heat therapy encompasses passive heating methods that elevate core and muscle temperatures, influencing muscle growth through various molecular pathways. This includes sauna bathing, thermotherapy via heating pads, and even hot water immersion. Based on this systematic review, it's increasingly clear that skeletal muscle remodels substantially in response to repeated exposure to heat stress, leading to improvements in muscle mass gain and neuromuscular coordination. According to this study, heat therapy affects muscle growth and recovery by mediating the upregulation of many genes involved in muscle hypertrophy and the downregulation of certain genes that control muscle atrophy. Specifically, they found that heat exposure leads to more muscle protein content, satellite cells, and IGF-1 while preventing further muscle damage and loss. For sauna bathing specifically, this study reported a 16-fold increase in serum growth hormone levels in male subjects, with those remaining elevated for as long as three days. There was even one study that concluded that long-term application of heat stress could be effective in increasing the muscle strength associated with hypertrophy without exercise training. And number five, probiotic supplementation. The foundation of biohacking often revolves around nutrition with dietary modifications significantly impacting bodily functions and performance. And since building muscle requires more protein than the average diet, having a healthy gut will allow you to break down and use this anabolic nutrient more efficiently. Inadequate gut flora can compromise protein absorption, limiting muscle protein synthesis, and thus hypertrophy. While this might not be as appealing as the first four hacks we've talked about, this is arguably one of the most important. Surprisingly, there are a good amount of studies that have explored the relationship between probiotics, gut health, and muscle physiology. In these studies, they found that after probiotic supplementation, male athletes experience in increases in strength, power, and exercise recovery. When it comes to utilizing most, if not all, of the protein you consume, these two studies reported significantly higher rates of amino acid digestion and absorption after protein and probiotic co-ingestion in comparison with protein alone. Apart from ensuring optimal protein absorption, the most obvious effect of probiotics is keeping your gut in tip-top condition. An unhealthy or leaky Leaky gut proposes that as a result of intestinal barrier breakdown, its permeability increases and is less able to regulate the translocation of harmful substances, triggering the immune system and inflammatory responses. 
These then negatively affect muscle cell function through different mechanisms, notably systematic inflammation, insulin resistance, glucose metabolism, and ATP production, which are cofactors for anabolic resistance. And this randomized clinical trial demonstrated that probiotic supplementation effectively enhanced markers associated with intestinal barrier function and reduced inflammation in physically trained men. Thus, by addressing gut microbiota imbalances and improving dietary protein utilization, probiotics can enhance both recovery and training performance. While there isn't a direct link between probiotic supplementation and enhanced muscle mass in humans, research done at the molecular and cellular levels is promising. So there you have it five biohacks that actually do help you build muscle. By optimizing your external and internal environment, you are paving the way for enhanced muscle growth and overall health. That said, do not overlook the importance of establishing a solid foundation of optimal training and sound nutrition. If those two things are not in order, there are no amount of hacks or magic powders that will help you achieve optimal results. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.